What's up? It's Coach Justin Mark, international dating coach and relationship expert. And guys, in this video, I want to talk about five things that I've learned from traveling to 50 plus countries. Now, at 25 years old, I just turned 25 recently, and I've literally traveled to 50 plus countries. I've done this while running multiple businesses, uh, having insane experiences uh, in my dating and social life, and just overall just crushing it. Um, I would say like if there was one thing I could have done better, maybe it was like maintaining my fitness because whenever you travel, it can be really difficult to get in the gym and I've tried my best. Uh, and like eating, you know, wh when you're jet lagged and you're traveling and you're bouncing around and you know, it, it can be difficult to like stay on top of your diet and supplements and nutrition and things like that. But overall, I've learned a ton from traveling to 50 plus countries. So from, you know, driving motorcycles across the country of Laos, or buying a motorcycle and spending two months, you know, backpack motorcycling off of the east coast of Australia, or you know, living in Mexico and then experiencing a media scandal, an international media scandal over Latin America and mostly Mexico, all parts of Mexico, or you know, just almost drowning in the Great Barrier Reef and just all these crazy fucking things from like Europe to Africa to even you know parts of you know, my home city of Toronto, Canada, where I'm currently at. It's been an adventure. It's been a trip. It's been like, you know, and I want to share with you some things I've learned in this time. So the first thing is the grass is not necessarily always greener on the other side. A lot of people think once you're living this life, or you're traveling and partying and you have this freedom, you'll be happy. That's not true. That's not necessarily true. I think, you know, true happiness only comes from one place and this is a fucking truth this is what i have learned over the course of the last like eight years is true happiness only comes from within what is crazy about that is you can actually find that happiness really easy I've, i personally helped a lot of my one-on-one -on -one clients um, on my live coaching programs boot camps immersions online mentor program i help them you know get in touch to where that happiness comes from and it's funny because a lot of people think, you know, once you know, I've got the money, I'll be happy. Once I'm in, you know, Japan, I will be happy. But it never comes. And it becomes this, like, cycle of you trying to escape. You know, instead of, like, focusing on what's inside, you're trying to run away. You're trying to, you know, go off to these other places. You're trying to find happiness externally, but you'll never find it externally. It's crazy how that works, right? So true happiness only comes from within. And I, I know that's like a really cheesy saying, happiness only comes from within, but it doesn't get more true than that. Like it literally can only come from inside your soul. Like it, it, it's crazy how, you know, you can be in these amazing places. You know, you can be on a mountain in Norway uh, and, you know, <laughs> have your hot Latina girlfriend giving you a blowjob while you're looking out at these beautiful mountains. And you're like, damn, but... It's not as good as you imagine it, you know? It's not as crazy as you expect it to be, you know? It's cool, don't get me wrong, it's one hell of an experience, right? Or like, you know, hugging up with your, you know, famous actress girlfriend in the ocean, like, like banging in the ocean, you know, in the Caribbean. Uh, or like in the swimming pool on your rooftop, or, you know, all these crazy places where you can do it, you know? Having all these amazing experiences, they're great experiences, don't get me wrong. But will they actually make you happy? You know, will these random hookups make you happy? Will having a hot girlfriend make you happy? Will traveling to these crazy places make you happy? Will, you know, going to all these incredible places, you know, do anything for you internally? It will, but what you'll realize along this journey is that it was within the entire time. I remember my first solo backpack trip was in Australia where I went to go visit my best friend Alfredo. I actually live with him now in Canada. And I, I went to go visit him in Australia. He was studying down there. And uh, I was kind of just like, I thought coming to Australia would solve all my problems. Like I, I had a really hot girlfriend in, in Canada and I broke up with her, ended with her, flew to Australia. And I thought it would just be this magical thing all of a sudden. And I realized, wait, this is just like Canada, just warmer and different animals and you know, people talk a little bit like this, mate, right? People talk like fucking weird, right? And I was just like, what? This is so strange. This is not what I thought it would be. And I realized that, you know, in order to have the adventure, you got to go off and have it your own adventure. So in a similar way, uh, I so what I did is I bounced to, I was in Brisbane and, and I flew over to Sydney. It went on a solo trip. And I remember my first day in Sydney, I almost cried. I was like, 
I'm all alone. I don't know anybody here. And by the end of the week, I had a job offer to work with a massive pickup company. And then I eventually worked with them and left them. And then I also filmed a YouTube video that got like a couple million views. And I had just made a solid network, met a ton of beautiful girls, made a ton of cool friends that I'm even still friends with to this day. Like the other day, I'm in the bathtub talking to my friend Dave from One Man's Life Mission. And uh, it's crazy how I met him, you know, four years ago down in Sydney, right? It's kind of trippy how work, or, or, sorry, life works like that. And uh, it, it's just strange. So in the same way, whatever experience you want to have externally, it has to come from within. So that was like the first major thing I learned from traveling to 50 plus countries. So if you're depressed, you're not going to have some external stimulus, whether it's drugs, alcohol, women, gambling, travel, money, or whatever it is to fix that inner depression. You, you can only fix it internally through, you know, fixing it or, you know, whatever's going on up here has to, you know, go on up here before it can manifest itself on the outside. So that's kind of first thing I noticed. So the second thing I noticed is a lot of guys think women in another place are different. Like, you know, I, I was under the impression that, you know, women outside of my home city of Toronto were better for, for no apparent reason. I was just like, they're better. They must be better because again, the grass is always greener. A lot of guys who live in Toronto say Toronto is one of the easiest places to meet women. That's not true at all. Actually, I've probably had better results here than anywhere else in the world. And you know, I don't want to say it publicly on a YouTube video because it's like insane. But um, you know, I probably get more results here <laughs> than anywhere else I've been to. I guess because I'm a Toronto man's is what they call it. But um, get pretty good results, right? And it's weird because there's a lot of places out there that you would think would have better women. I, I was under the impression that you know women in Mexico are more feminine, or you know women in certain countries are better. But again, the grass is always greener. So. It's just another form of escape. Instead of trying to fix your game or improve your situation or whatever it is, you're thinking about the fantasy of this fantasy land that you can go to. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, there's a lot that other countries, you know, can offer you in terms of culture, food, experiences, the people. Uh, you know, one thing I, I really loved about, you know, dating in Mexico was the femininity, the traditional stereotypical uh, masculine and feminine roles. Uh, we're very apparent, but it's not like you can't find that at home in North America or wherever the fuck you're watching this video from, right? A lot of guys always say, I want to leave my home because there's no feminine women here. Dude, they're everywhere. If you can bring out your core masculinity as a man, you can bring out your the femininity in a woman. That's just how it is. That's just the fucking truth. If you're really grounded as a man and you're masculine as fuck and you really understand who you are and your value as a man, you can bring it out in that woman. So you don't necessarily need to travel to 50 plus countries or whatever the fuck, or, you know, go live in random places and go, you know, sleep on the beach and do all these things, uh, for attracting women. Now you can do it for yourself because you want to experience those things. And that's amazing, but don't do it for the sole purpose of trying to become attracted to women because you'll end up disappointed. Now, you know, don't get me wrong. Will you grow a fuck ton from traveling? Hell yes. Which brings us to the third point. You're going to grow a fuck ton from traveling. You're going to grow more than you can ever even imagine because you know imagine this you are in a random country in a random city you've never been to you don't speak the language now all of a sudden you have to figure out you know how to feed yourself how to order food in the restaurant how to you know even these small little things like they're a little bit different in different places you go to like in certain countries um you know in like asia some places don't have like public restrooms besides like a little hole in the floor so you might go to the bathroom and there's like a hole in the floor and they expect you to like squat down and shit in one of those holes in the floor. And personally, I was always like, nope, not, not doing that. But, um, you know, it, it's crazy how, you know, experiencing these different things will take you to a whole other level because what happens, it's almost like your brain becomes more intelligent. It's like new neural pathways in your brain form, almost like you're tripping on psilocybic mushrooms or something because now you're forced through this journey of growth and different experiences that you haven't experienced before. And it's like your brain is just gonna find solutions to problems. So I almost found that, you know, traveling all these countries almost taught me to be an entrepreneur, taught me how to become resourceful, taught me how to, you know, get myself out of situations and get myself into certain situations, taught me how to get the results I would want to look for in social situations, even if I don't speak the language taught me how to, you know, recreate myself over and over and over and over, 
right? Like um, there's this Bruce Lee quote saying, be like water, right? Water has no shape, it has no form. So you wanna constantly be like adapting and you know, fixing yourself in what the situation is. And so, you know, once you're traveling, you can actually constantly find yourself in these challenges that suck and make you miss home. I remember being in Europe, being depressed as shit, being like, I miss home. But when I flew home, you know, my living situation at home, which is so much better because of all the things I had learned, right? So I was depressed because of all these challenges I was experiencing. But what had happened was I was able to overcome so many really fucked up challenges from having food poisoning, like almost dying, uh, running out of money, um, you know, just not being happy with the experiences I was given. Like I, I thought I was gonna experience something else. I didn't expect to experience this experience. This is so strange. And accepting it and just, you know, accepting life for what it gives me. And it was crazy because it allowed me to just mature and grow so much as a person that it's almost like I've lived literally 10 lifetimes. I've lived 10 fucking lifetimes. And on top of that, I've experienced, you know, different people, different relationships, different intimate relationships with the opposite gender <laughs> in countries all over the world, right? And so it's been such a crazy experience and it has really blown my mind to what's possible and what's out there as well. So it's a 100% it has been an amazing experience in doing so, but you gotta make sure you're doing it for the right reason. I truly do love to travel and experience other cultures. And to be honest, I mean, I love my home city of Toronto, but I don't really even like to live here most of the time, right? Like some of the most happiest times of my life was you know, sleeping in a random beach town in Australia, sharing a room with a bunch of random fucking people I met along the way and just partying and going crazy and having fun, just being in that moment, being in that flow, being in the zone, right? And, uh, you know, another example of this is being in a small town in Mexico or like a small city um, with a hot girl that I met and uh, just enjoying her company, enjoying what the city has to offer, enjoying this different culture, this different type of vibe, right? And it's crazy, you know, these opportunities that can present themselves. So another thing I have learned is how you don't actually have to even stay in your city. A lot of people haven't traveled. A lot of people have never left their even home fucking city or their own country, which blows my mind. I think there's like a statistic where it's like 40% of Americans have never left their own like city or their own country, which is like insane. It's insane because like, for example, like, I remember um, I had like an ankle bracelet. Like I've got this little ankle bracelet on my foot, right? And I had like an old one that I was like, this ankle bracelet has been to more countries than the average American, right? Which is crazy as fuck to, to me. Like it's like, whoa, right? And so what was interesting is that you can actually find a lot of countries that suit what you're looking for. For example, you know, with the whole COVID situation, a lot of people started working from home. My buddy Alfredo, his girlfriend works from home and she's never even been to the office of the company she works for. So she has like a full-time job, 40 hours a week uh, for a pretty big company. She's never been to their office. They hired her online. They shipped her laptop and she works full-time from home. So what is stopping her from jumping on a flight and bouncing to, you know, Colombia and then living in Colombia, right? Nothing, nothing is stopping her from doing that. And you can do it too. I've done it, right? The difference is instead of working you know, the typical 40 hour work week for a company, I run my own businesses and I do it off my laptop, right? So I'm able to work from anywhere in the world, which is amazing. So a lot of people don't realize that you can actually do that. And a lot of people think traveling is expensive, but I spent more money this month in Toronto on rent than I would typically in Mexico, for example. Like, you know, my typical rent in Mexico, some months was like a few hundred bucks, right? 500, $600 US for the whole month, right? And it's crazy because, you know, by actually flying to those places, you can actually save money because let's say you are working that 40 hour work week or running your business or whatever. And let's say you can cut your expenses by living in a cheap company or country uh, while working for your company. So let's say you're living in Colombia or, you know, Mexico or, you know, any of these countries in, you know, Eastern Europe, you can actually go enjoy the culture, enjoy the food, enjoy the people, enjoy traveling and living abroad while still doing your business, doing your work, getting paid, right? But your expenses are even cheaper. So you're saving money by traveling. A lot of people have no idea. It's crazy. I actually find I make double the money on average uh, when I'm abroad. Now, this isn't always the case, but I noticed that last year, if, you know, when I was doing my taxes and doing my accounting, I noticed that the months that I was not home, I would, cause when I was home, I was distracted by girls. I was distracted by friends, parties, 
craziness, adventures. So when I was abroad, because I had less distractions, because I knew less people, I was making twice as much money, which is fucking crazy, right? And so if I had just lived abroad the entire time, I would have made way the fuck more money. For example, you know, while I'm filming this video, we're in uh, October of 2019. I spent 10 months of the year abroad. I spent 10 months a year not in my home city of Toronto, Canada. And I recently got back to Toronto, Canada, gonna kick it here for a bit. And then I also realized that, I'm like, wait, I made way the fuck more money while living abroad because I didn't have distractions. Girls weren't distracting me. I had way the fuck less distractions. So even though COVID, you know, fucked up everyone's businesses, I probably, and don't get me wrong, I fucked my business up too a little bit, but I was still able to make more money than I ever have and more money than most people uh, would or should because of, you know, being in a situation where I didn't have any distractions and I was in situations where my living expenses were a lot fucking cheaper. Now, at the same time, because my living expenses were a lot cheaper, I was balling out, you know? Um, for example, when I'm gonna go see a woman, when I'm gonna go have a date, I'll Uber the girl to me. And since I would go on like three or four dates a day, I'd have like, you know, three or four girls in Ubers coming to me per day or whatever, right? And so it was funny because then I ended up paying like a $2, $3 Uber here and there, ends up being like $20 a day plus food and drinks and stuff. So then I end up spending more money than I typically would. Because in my mind, I'm like, well, it's so cheap here. So we could just ball out. And I end up spending like, you know, 15 or 20 grand in like a month and a half. And I'm like, wait, what the fuck, right? When I'm paying off my credit card, I'm like, where did all this money come from? Did someone steal my credit card? Oh, nope, it was me. And, uh, you know, so you gotta watch out for that as well. What's even crazier about living abroad is, um, you know, let's say you live out of Airbnbs. For a long time, I was living out of Airbnbs. And you can literally just message the Airbnb host. And if, by the way, this is a secret, keep this to yourself, I'm sharing with you. Because you're part of my squad, you're part of my community, you're part of my fucking tribe. So keep this a secret, okay? Well, what I would do is I would find the nicest fucking apartments, places that cost five, six grand a month, okay? And because of the COVID-19 situation, and a lack of tourism, and because I'd booked them for a month or two at a time, I had a bit of a script where I'd write this really awesome, convincing script where I'm saying, hey, look, you know, COVID-19 is happening. Uh, you know, there's a lack of tourism. You know, rental prices have dropped. I'm willing to offer you this much money. So let's say the place costs like six grand for the month. Uh, I'll book a three bedroom place that costs five to six grand, right? And I'll say, look, my budget is, you know, $2,400. Can you do it? If you can't, no worries, all the best. But oftentimes, you know, you message like 10 or 15 hosts who have like a penthouse or a really nice apartment, they'll say, you know what, fuck it, sure, right? And as long as you say, look, if I like the place, I'll extend it, then they're willing to do it. So, you know, you book the place for a month at a time and you can always extend it and then you're getting cheap as fuck rent. And then, you know, I'm booking a three bedroom place and then traveling with friends of mine like Brad or David Bond or, you know, whoever the fuck else I'm traveling with, or like my good friend Adrian G, we do this as well. And then we're getting these luxury apartments, these luxury accommodations for really fucking cheap. We're saving money. We're living in really high quality living spa spaces and experiences. And then funny enough, when we hang out with girls, they're like even looking at us like, who the fuck is this guy? And how is he living in a nicer apartment than I do, even though I'm a local, which is crazy. So that is a major, 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 major fucking thing that uh, you could do uh, to save money and live in really nice uh, accommodation and experience. Now, guys, if you have any further questions, you can actually message me on my Snapchat, my Instagram, or my Telegram inner circle. All the links are in the description or at the bottom of this screen. Message my Telegram, my personal Telegram, or join my Telegram inner circle. Follow me on my Instagram, my new Instagram, and feel free to message me anytime. Or add me on Snapchat, watch my, my daily Snapchat stories, and uh, message me anytime as well. Now, guys, um, there are so many more things about traveling uh, from seeing beautiful places, nature, seeing different cities, having different opportunities present themselves, or even just being in environments where like, you know, living in Hollywood where, you know, you're walking down the street and I see like Mark Wahlberg hanging out or, um, you know, going to these influencer parties in LA where I'm meeting like literally every single, like I remember, uh, you know, hanging out in like the same group as like David Dobrik, like I was hanging out with him and his friends. And I remember talking to like, Jason Nash and all these like, um, interesting high level dudes, or I met Tana Mojo. Like I was, she actually introduced herself to me. I met all these like really interesting people. I remember I met these guys called, um, the Ireland boys, right? All these like crazy influencers and shit in LA. And you know, I don't really follow most of that type of content, 
but it's cool to put yourself in that environment. So just realize that there's so much more outside of your home city. You don't have to do it, but it will open up your brain to new ways of thinking, new experiences, new adventures, new people, new dating opportunities, new, you know, whatever the fuck you're looking for in life, right? And it's amazing because the whole point of life is to live and most people are not living. So I would highly encourage you to wake the fuck up, you know, cut your excuses. A lot of people think during COVID-19 you can't travel. That's not true. A lot of countries are open. A lot of borders are opening and then closing, opening and then closing, right? For example, you know, in most recent times, it's amazing this video, Brazil, Colombia, uh, tons of Europe, um, some parts of Asia and a lot of parts of Africa are open and everything is on discount. Now, is now the most safest time to travel? Obviously not. But you could live abroad. You could bounce out of one of these countries, live abroad for six months, then go home, experience new things, learn new languages. And this will honestly change your life. And on top of all this, this will make you incredibly attractive to women. Imagine what a woman thinks when I tell her, oh yeah, I've been in 50 countries. And she's like, whoa, I've never left North America. Like I was hanging out with these girls recently. They told me they never had, they've been in America, like they've been in New York and Boston, but that's like a really close drive from Toronto. So they have pretty much never left the East Coast of North America. And I'm like, that is weird as fuck. That is super strange. That is mind blowing, right? And you gotta realize that there's so much more out there for you, for you to experience, and uh, you can experience it. So guys, I would highly encourage you to do that at some point. Set up a plan, literally, you just gotta book a ticket. A lot of people think it's this big thing you gotta do. Literally open your laptop, search up visa requirements for that country. Most countries don't have visa requirements if you are from a first world country, such as America, Canada, Australia, or England, okay? So if you're from like those four countries or any like first world countries, um, you usually don't even need a visa for most countries, but maybe you do. Um, you, you can usually get them online as well, very fucking easily as well. It's not that expensive and then just book a one-way flight. Get the flight, get an accommodation, bounce out there, and go enjoy your time. So guys, thanks so much for watching. My name is Justin Mark. See you guys in the next video. Don't forget to message me on social media and uh, links are in the description and make sure to subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video.